ready for the ride of your life? Meet a plane that redefines the word jumbo. It's one of the world's largest aircraft, the Galaxy C5. Stretching nearly a football field long and higher than six stories, this monster's bigger than a warehouse. But it can fly. It's the military's ace in the hole for getting big things long distances in a hurry. Today, you'll get a special glimpse inside this massive aircraft. It will carry over 50 tons of life-saving equipment to Iraq. To deliver the goods, the Megaplane's power and endurance will be put to the test. This hero will reveal the secrets of flying the world's heaviest loads and show it's got the right stuff. Dover Air Force Base, Delaware. Each year, over 90,000 tons of cargo pass through Dover, destined for US troops abroad. The fastest way to get the troops the goods? By aircraft. But not just any aircraft. Dover's home to a fleet of supreme weightlifters. The gigantic Galaxy C-5s. Pulling off crew. The C-5 makes commercial planes look puny. Here's a Humvee. And here's a jet. And finally, the C-5. Stretching more than 70 meters, this mega plane is longer than the entire first flight of the Wright brothers. You see it flying up in the sky and you're just like, wow. Here going over, it's the loudest thing you've ever heard. It's over six stories high and can carry four times as much cargo as a standard jet. Dover has 32 C5 planes in all. And they're kept uh, busy. Option one seven assault. Caution, wake up and say C five to forty. Today, one C five receives an important assignment. The plane must fly over fifty tons of equipment to Iraq, pick up a new shipment, and bring it home. They'll fly farther than 21,000 kilometers for more than 29 hours. The cargo's urgent, vital add-on armor for the transport vehicles used by American troops in Iraq. This armor is key for the soldiers' security. But that's not all the mega plane can carry. can comfortably transport two full platoons and all their gear anywhere in the world on a moment's notice. And as operations continue, the mega plane can deliver just about anything the troops need. From trucks, to tanks, to choppers. This heavyweight was designed for the toughest missions. It has incredible range. We can carry a lot of cargo where it needs to go. With the help of an air tanker, the C-5 can travel the long distance to Iraq without even stopping for gas. That's over 10,000 kilometers. And the plane's amazing loading maneuvers allow it to take on some awkward cargo. Need to load a tank? The C-5's massive frame can transform from an awesome aircraft 
to a drive through warehouse in just minutes. The nose and tail of the plane tilt up, and then the plane actually kneels within a meter of the ground. It lowers a ramp, and the vehicle drives right on. But it's the cargo space that makes the C-5 a true champion of the skies. Over 1,000 cubic meters of equipment can fit here. The space is divided into two floors. The rear top deck seats up to 73 soldiers. And the nose holds roomy quarters for the crew, including the galley, bunk room and flight deck. The bottom floor is custom designed for cargo. 14 Humvees, 7 Huey helicopters, or 2 Abrams tanks can fit comfortably inside. Something that big is not supposed to get off the ground. But we see this thing get off the ground every day. 10, 20 times. It's just amazing. The Megaplane was born out of necessity as America's international role expanded. World War II had proved the strategic power of airlifts. Planes transported troops and provisions to the front lines, creating a decisive advantage. The bigger the aircraft, the more it could carry and the United States was determined to have the biggest to support their growing missions abroad. In the 1960s, they began designing the world's most daring plane. It would carry dozens of troops, tons of cargo, and be able to refuel in the air. But many doubted it would ever get off the ground. Engineers knew they had two major challenges in getting an aircraft this big to take flight. One, creating enough power or thrust to get the plane airborne. And two, designing a frame strong enough to support a record-breaking payload. Years of development produced a powerful engine, but the frame proved tricky. Early flights revealed wing stress. Large cracks developed after long flights. New reinforced wings were installed, easing the problem. But how would the jumbo plane handle in combat? The aircraft's first tour was in Vietnam. The C-5 was able to airdrop soldiers, jeeps and even tanks behind enemy lines. In the first Persian Gulf War, the megaplane won fame for its incredible cargo capacity. It took just three weeks for the fleet to deliver over a million kilograms of equipment to the front lines. The C-5 had revolutionized military airlift capacity, but its missions are not without cost. Two C-5s have crashed in military operations, and in 2004, a megaplane barely survived a missile attack in Iraq. Today's mission once again puts the C-5 through the ultimate test. The plane must carry its massive load of armor to one of the most dangerous combat zones in the Middle East. Insurgents regularly use surface-to-air missiles and rocket-propelled grenades to attack aircraft. This enormous machine will have to be ready to respond to the worst its enemies offer by performing at its absolute best. For its mission to Iraq, the Galaxy C-5 must be able to carry a whopping 54 tons of cargo. That's as much weight as 10 mobile homes. The next biggest military cargo plane, the C-17, would have to make two trips to carry the same amount. 
The C5 will have to be in great shape to lift such an enormous load. Like every star athlete, the Megaplane has a team that keeps it in top form. An army of men and women dedicated to its care. It's a never-ending job. On average, the C5 needs 16 hours of maintenance for every single hour it's spent in the air. The work all starts here, ISODOC. The maintenance crew looks like an army of ants next to the giant aircraft. For the C5, the key to everlasting youth is constant maintenance. In ISO, all of the systems and parts are tested, from the large to small. But of all the parts on the C5, none receives as much care as the gigantic engines. The TF-39 turbofans. They're the Megaplane's special tool for taking flight. The C5 seems to defy the laws of physics when getting off the ground. There are four forces that affect aircraft. Thrust, drag, lift, and weight. Thrust is the forward force created by the engines. Drag is the resistant force of the plane being pulled through the air. Weight, the downward force, equals the C5's total weight, which can be nearly half a million kilos. Lift, the upward force, is created by the wings moving through the air. As air moves over the curved upper surface of the wing, velocity increases. This reduces pressure above the wing. With more pressure underneath and less pressure above, the plane will lift or rise. When the force of lift equals the force of weight, you begin to fly. The C5's challenge is that it has a lot more weight and drag than other planes. The solution? 30 meter wings with a larger surface space to increase the lift. And engines so powerful they can rocket this mega mover off the ground. Each engine is almost 9 meters long and 2 meters in diameter, larger than a pickup truck. The gaping open front is called the air inlet. The narrow waist is the air compressor. And behind that is the turbine. The final piece at the end is the exhaust. The mega engine is a complex part, but what it does is relatively simple. It converts air to power in four easy steps. First, it sucks in air. The inlet swallows huge gulps. Next, it squeezes. The air compressor presses the air into an explosive unit. It passes the pressurized air into the turbine, where step three occurs, the bang. This is where air and fuel mix and ignite, creating power. In this case, over 19,000 kilograms of thrust. And finally, step four, the blow. The exhaust tail blows the air discharge out, propelling the plane forward. When the Megaplane's four engines work together, they create so much thrust that the plane can take off with almost half a million kilograms of weight. That's like lifting five space shuttles and keeping them off the ground. For the C5 to operate safely, it's critical that the engines work perfectly or the plane could fall from the sky. At the first sign of trouble, the mega part is removed from the aircraft and brought here to the jet shop. An expertly trained crew of mechanics takes the turbofan apart. The outer layer of the engine is removed to reveal the inner core. Most engine damage is caused by foreign objects and debris, 
called fog for short. Something as small as a bottle cap can destroy a turbofan's insides if it gets sucked in by the mighty air inlet. Technicians comb through the giant system looking for anything that could be wrong. They use a microscopic camera called a boroscope to probe inside the turbine. The camera can usually detect malfunctioning parts, but if nothing turns up, the mechanics will strip the engine down to its smallest elements. After giving everything the once over, they'll rebuild, a process that can take months. When an aircraft needs a new engine in ISO, the part comes from a pre-tested supply stock. Installing the massive engine takes a lot of muscle. A team of six heaves it into place. This is no time for a slip-up. The turbofan alone weighs 3,500 kilos. If it bumps anything, it can wreck itself and crush whatever or whomever it hits. The workers strain to lift the engine. They load the turbofan into the aircraft by hooking it onto a giant mount. Incredibly, the mega part hangs in place, made secure with just a few bolts. A nut in the front and two pins in the back. No, the whole Is your hands clear? The engine just hangs in the back. There's really nothing that physically connects it other than those two pins. The rest of the ISO team joins in to connect the major systems. The hydraulics, fuel and electronics are networked into the engine. Finally, the gigantic aircraft is returned to the flight line. The plane should now be ready to fly into a war zone, but the crew's got another challenge. Train up, train up. Loading it with several tons of cargo, both in the States and in Iraq. Do it wrong, and the C-5 could tilt and crash on takeoff. The crew will have to prove they know their stuff. At Dover Air Force Base in Delaware, training for combat conditions is a part of everyday work. The C-5 crew must be able to protect the plane in any environment. In Iraq, the mega plane will be most vulnerable when it's sitting on the tarmac. The base is located in a heavy combat zone. Its official name is Ballard but the troops call it Mortaritaville. Missile attacks by insurgents are a part of daily life. The sooner the C-5 unloads and reloads, the sooner it can get in the air and to safety. The crew has a game plan for unloading its cargo. They'll be dropping off armor plates used to protect personnel carriers but they have no idea what cargo they'll be picking up. In combat zones, transport priorities shift hour by hour. They'll have to be prepared to load anything, and load it fast. That would be hard enough, but they also have to store the cargo so that the massive aircraft is perfectly balanced. Put too much weight in any one section, and the C-5 could tilt and crash on takeoff. Because they don't know what they're loading in Ballard, the crew will rely on a proven strategy for balance. Think of the plane as a giant seesaw, with its wings near the center. The cargo hold is the plank. Just like on a seesaw, light items at the end of the cargo hold can be balanced by placing heavier items near the center. Perfect balance is called moment, the moment at which the giant seesaw stays level. On all missions, the crew follows a packing plan called a load sequence that tells them where each piece of cargo should be placed to balance the plane. In Iraq, they'll have to be able to execute the load sequence with the efficiency of a race car pit crew. Lucky for them, they're working with one of the world champions of transport vehicles.
The C5's rugged design can take on a mountain of gear and keep it organized. Its cargo hold is divided into two parallel galleys. Each galley has 18 floor spaces called stations, where a cargo unit can be stowed. The cargo usually arrives on pallets that are the same size as the stations. The C5's ingenious floor design flips over to roller slots. Workers slide the pallets down the slots to their assigned station. To unload, it's the same process in reverse. If the crew follows the load sequence properly, there's no piece of equipment in the US Army's arsenal that the C5 can't carry. We can load two to three tanks, we can load boats, airplanes, you name it, we can carry it. Cargo loading is critical, but it's only part of the challenge of working with the mega plane. Flying a machine as large as a barn can only be done by the world's best pilots, and even they have to practice constantly. For most pilots, that practice happens here, in the flight simulator. Outside, huge hydraulic cylinders raise, lower, tilt, and shake the machine to simulate every condition a pilot could experience. And inside, it's the world's most exciting video game on steroids. Every lever, button and switch is exactly what you'd find on the Mega Plane. And each delivers the sensation of using the real thing. Want to know how to turn a plane with a 67 meter wingspan? Or what it's like to land almost 500 tons of aircraft when the flight deck six stories above ground. Pilots can practice dealing with hurricane force winds, lightning, snow, and even missile attack without suffering the consequences of crashing or getting killed. The simulators cost $30 million compared to the C5's $150 million makes this training system a relative bargain. And considering that practice makes for safer flights, the machine's invaluable. But some operations can only be practiced on the job. Of all the maneuvers the pilots rehearse, none is more demanding and dangerous than mid-air refueling. It's the most difficult part of the mission to Iraq, even more terrifying than landing in a war zone. No C-5s have ever been lost during mid-air refueling, but the potential for collision is huge. To refuel in the air, this six-story, 75-meter-long aircraft is about to fly within four meters of an air tanker, while traveling at 700 kilometers per hour. The air tanker will extend a fuel hose, called a boom, to feed gas to the mega plane. In the air tanker, the boom operator sits in a window in the plane's belly, waiting for the critical moment to deploy the hose. Five units of boom trim in, lower limit is still 40 degrees, and you're good enough to bring up. The C-5 has to draw close, but not too close. 30 feet. The planes push air away from their frames as they move, creating an effect called wind shear. All planes create wind shear, but no other Air Force plane creates quite as much as the enormous C-5. It hits the air tanker like an invisible tidal wave. About 30 feet, we start feeling their bow wave, which is a big rush of air that comes off the front of the aircraft, and it pushes up on the bottom of our aircraft. When they're about 20 feet aft, that's when all the bow wave is pushing on the aircraft at maximum force. When the planes are two car lengths apart, the operator extends the boom. We're still searching. 
Even veterans have a hard time hitting the fuel intake valve, located just above the C-5's cockpit. Negative, that was next one, right? The dangerous maneuver continues until he gets it right or the C-5 runs out of gas. Wind up down. Okay. Wind the boom down. Finally, this mid-air refueling is a success. But on the flight to Iraq, the operation will be even harder. The two planes will meet in the stormy air currents over the Atlantic, and the refueling will take place in the dark of night. The crew of this incredible plane will have to prove their mastery of the machine. And there's no harder test than a mid-air refueling and cargo drop during active combat in Iraq. After intense preparation, it's go time at Dover Air Force Base in Delaware. The mighty Galaxy C-5 is ready to show what makes it one of the world's greatest weightlifters. But like any supreme machine, the plane's success depends on its crew. Today, the pressure's on veteran pilot Rusty Gon. Gon's in charge of getting this supersized aircraft from the United States to Iraq and back in one piece. But first, the plane will fly to Charleston, South Carolina, to pick up its cargo. Taking off empty from Dover Air Force Base is easy, but the next time this plane leaves the ground, it will be flying with nearly its maximum weight to a destination over 10,000 kilometers away for a total of 13 hours in the air. The plane and everyone on board will have to perform at peak capacity. About an hour after leaving Dover, the enormous aircraft nears its destination. Charleston, South Carolina comes into view. The mega plane begins its descent. In combat zones, the C-5 often has to land without radio communication for security reasons. The plane has an inertial navigation system so that it can track direction on its own. There's your base. Better left. But for this landing, security's not an issue. Keto 75 heavy traffic is a heavy C5 crossing down on Fort Traffic site. The C5 receives its instructions from the ground. This is a delicate moment. The bulky airframe actually makes the machine more vulnerable to injury. The 220-ton plane needs a lot of cushion when it hits the pavement. Five miles, ILS three, three, you're down. To absorb the brutal impact, the C5 has 28 mammoth tires. Each is over a meter tall and half a meter wide. This is a tight plan. The tires can only survive a handful of landings before they get too thin for use. Seven. Seven, Touchdown. Spoilers. Now we're clear. Clear me right. Yeah, you're clear on the right. The Air Force loading team assembles to greet it. Stop left. Stop center. Dude, we're getting a rock star park. Moving 50 tons of cargo is a big job, and it's all hands on deck. The C-5 is picking up 17 kits of add-on armor, a jumbo shipment that will put the plane close to its maximum cargo capacity. In Iraq, the troops will weld the Kevlar plates to their vehicles for protection against rocket-propelled grenades. Loadmaster Bob Devine needs to make sure the kits are properly packaged. 
The loaders evenly distribute the kits of armor according to the load sequence. Divine checks their work and makes sure the pallets are correctly placed. The job is going smoothly. Divine can only hope the unknown cargo in Iraq, whatever it is, is as easy to handle. Now, all the C5 has to do is get there. But first, it has to get off the ground. All right, here we are taxiing. 7041. The strategy for each takeoff is different. Glad to that. Is everybody strapped in back there, ready to go? The pilots sure, must sure. consider the weight of the plane and the length of the runway. Copy that. To lift off the ground, Time. the C5 needs to reach a land go. speed of 225 kilometers per hour. Ground clearance. When planes are heavy, like this one, it takes longer for them to gain speed. And at Charleston Air Force Base, the runway's just two-thirds the length of Dover, a mere two and a half kilometers. So this C-5 will have to get going fast, or risk running out of road. Roger. This is where the crew's experience is critical. The pilots employ a proven strategy to reach the target velocity. It's a bit like drag racing. The fuel tanks are left half empty to lighten the plane's weight. And now the pilots rev the engines while standing still. They'll keep the brakes on until each turbofan reaches its maximum thrust. And then, at peak power, the pilots let go. The C-5 floors it, the engines firing a maximum 76,000 kilograms of thrust. Finally, it's airborne. They've made it. But the mission and its challenges are just beginning. This heavyweight will need more fuel, soon. It's scheduled for an en route refueling. About an hour out over the Atlantic Ocean, the pilots spy their prize, the air tank. Measure a stable transfer for a C5, maybe about 100,000 pounds of gas. Hold the 30. It's 2,500 below us. In the C-5 flight deck, the flight engineer prepares for the demanding task of managing the fuel. Just like the cargo, the fuel has to be carefully funneled into the 12 tanks according to weight. If the flight engineer doesn't constantly rebalance the tanks, the C-5 could dangerously tilt and hit the tanker. And, uh, one, two, three, yes, one, nine, or reach five, three, seven, six. Three, yeah. Gon's also under the gun. He needs to keep the plane straight and steady before and during the maneuver, or the boom could come loose, spewing precious fuel. Okay, move forward now, 20 feet. Clear, turn. Gon tries to line the C5 up under the air tanker using tiny lights in its belly, but it's not easy. The mega plane bounces around like a tiny toy in a vicious current. Center on one, two, three, decimal nine. Boom and Above the C5 in the darkness, the boom operator seizes a window of opportunity. He extends the boom. Several tense minutes pass as the two planes dance. The hose rattles against the flight deck ceiling, but it misses the valve.
Finally, the clank of the boom hitting the target. You guys rock. They can go anywhere without tanker gas. But the challenge is far from over. Now, they have to hold the position for 15 minutes while the C5 gets fuel. Yeah, pretty much. She's still sitting a little bit right, uh, 12 feet, uh, 34 degrees now. Sorry about all the wobble. The flight engineer works to funnel tons of gas as it pours into the megaplane. The plane takes on fuel at a rate of 3,300 kilograms a minute. Moving out, she's coming up. Finally, the megaplane is loaded with gas. A hundred and thirty kilos of it. Boom, it's clear. And that is good for us. All right, sir, appreciate it. Thanks for the workout tonight. And uh, you're in the orange cup. But there's still a long night ahead. And Iraq is just a day away. Morning breaks over the Middle East. The C-5 is less than an hour out of Balad. It's the main U.S. airbase in Iraq and a hub for military cargo. Pressurization is completed. The megaplane begins preparations for arrival. Soon, it will be within target range of surface-to-air missiles. Each member of the crew prepares for the danger differently. I just put the picture up there to remind myself of what I'm doing, uh, what we're here for. From here on out, the crew relies on their inertial navigation system. They'll keep radio chatter to a minimum to try to reduce risk of attack. For enemies, there's no bigger target in the sky than an approaching C-5. In January 2004, a C-5 leaving Baghdad International Airport was hit by a rocket-propelled grenade while on the runway. As far as attacks go, Balad is even more dangerous than Baghdad. The C-5 does have some defense systems, but they're classified. In a large part, survival depends on evasive flying. The C-5 isn't agile, like most of the aircraft in the combat zone, but it does have some tricks up its sleeve. The plane will make a steep, high-speed landing, falling fast out of the sky to thwart missile attack. This kind of landing is a calculated gamble. Even if they descend safely, the pilots will have to wrestle 270,000 kilograms of speeding metal to a full stop before the airstrip ends. It's high noon in Balad, and this C-5's got a job to do quickly. ORM is still high here, all right? So just watch it. Make sure you're keeping an eye on everybody, not only for the combat environment, but also now the added factor, the stress and dehydration. All right, let's keep it tight, all right? Let's go. Speed is critical. It's not just about making the deadline. It's about staying alive. The landing may have been dangerous, but at least in the air, the aircraft has an escape route. On the ground during cargo operations, the C-5 is an enormous sitting duck. Other aircraft, like the F-16 fighter plane, take cover in thick concrete bunkers. But there's no bunker large enough to protect the C-5. The only place to unload is on the runway, in the middle of a war zone. To enemies, this $150 million machine is a mega gas tank, just waiting to be blown up. To 
To reduce the risk to the plane and personnel, the base wants the C-5 airborne as soon as possible. Hey, fast coming off. The crew is given two hours to unload the armor plates and pick up the unknown shipment. They'll have to move fast and be ready for anything. Giant loading trucks pull up. These machines are called K-loaders or tonners. They can carry up to six pallets to a total of 27 tons apiece. To speed the unloading process, the tonners link up. Now all of the pallets can be moved off in one long line. The haul trucks push off. They've used 50 minutes of their two-hour window. Not bad. But now the crew faces a new challenge, loading the unknown cargo. It could be anything. They hope it's not too difficult. The loadmaster gets the news. It's a damaged F-16 engine, a big, bulky part. Just bringing it all the way up to the ramp, just pushing it up. To... It's four and a half meters long and about one meter in diameter, about the size of a small boat. Underneath this protective covering is the key to the F-16 attack fighter's strength. It's crucial that this engine be repaired and returned for service and fast. Oversized items like this are exactly what the C-5 is made for, but that doesn't make loading the massive engine any easier. The F-16 is on a rolling platform. It must be hauled in the front. With less than an hour left till takeoff, it's time for the Mega Movers crew to show their stuff. The C-5 smiles. It's ready for a front load. The crew strains to roll the F-16 part up the ramp. They must balance the F-16 engine with the stacks of empty pallets and the two heavy wings. The engine only weighs 1,800 kilos. For the C-5, this is a pretty light load. Train him up, train him up. But it feels plenty heavy to the team muscling it into the bay. The over a little bit too. To keep the C-5 seesaw level, the mega engine will be placed toward the front of the cargo area, with the pallets on the opposite end. Up here. After making sure the engine's secure, the crew locks everything down with heavy chains. But cargo's not the only thing the megaplane will be carrying back. Outside the aircraft, a platoon assembles. It's time for them to leave Iraq, and they're hitching a ride on the C-5. The troops scale the aircraft stairway. Finally, they're all in. A short two hours after landing, it's time for the megaplane to finish its mission. Engineers, what we got? All good. Okay. Captain Gon takes his team through the procedure. Anything crazy with the load going on? This is no time to relax. The lives of the 72 soldiers on board depend upon the megaplane's protection right, and the crew's care. Pull it down. We got one more leg. Keep your eye out. As soon as we break here, the pilot's going to go upstairs, set ourselves up, we're good to go. Just watch it. The pilots set their sights on the horizon and a safer airspace. The four powerful engines let out a roar. The C-5 sprints forward with 76,000 kilograms of thrust. She's airborne. The megaplane heads east, her mission close to its finish. Every time we come in here, it's for a specific purpose. And there's someone on the other end that needs what we're bringing in. 
it feels great to make sure that uh, we do our end as good as they do theirs over there. After days of work, the megaplane finally nears home. It's the dark of night, and the lights of Dover Air Force Base beckon with a warm glow. Three, three, five, seven, heavy, double time, wind calm, runway one nine, clear to land. The Galaxy C5 makes a graceful landing on the misty airstream. A group of workers wait to greet it. They're just one part of the large army of men and women who have made the Megaplane's mission possible. They unload the aircraft the final step in a pipeline that has shuttled life-saving equipment to Iraq and brought back troops in return. The C-5's massive size, its superior strength, and its incredible stamina have allowed it to execute an operation no other Air Force plane could handle. And while demanding the sacrifice and service of its crew, the Megaplane has given each the opportunity to be part of something bigger, much bigger than themselves.